All right, so in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to deep clean your Neato BotVac Connected Series vacuum. Uh, this will work for the entire BotVac Connected Series. This is a D7, but it'll work for the D5, D3, and BotVac Connected. Uh, I'll talk about everything that Neato tells you to do, plus a few things that they don't mention, but are really important. So with your filters, it's important to replace these, uh, I think Neato says, one to two months. So if you did two, that's six filters a year. Uh, but you can get a lot of life out, out of these just by cleaning them. One thing that Neato recommends to do is to beat it out like that to get some dust out. And that gets a good deal of the dust out. I also take a vacuum hose and run the vacuum hose over this uh, area to get a lot of the fine debris out. Now because Neato has this mesh on here, you can't get a lot of the bigger stuff out. Uh, which is kind of odd because the brush that they include is called a filter brush and they show you kind of cleaning out the filter like that But with this screen you can't really do that The screen is meant to keep big hair from getting down there like like this But you can cut this with an exacto knife or something and get it out of there and then just kind of fold it back It won't affect too much if you decide to do that You need a microfiber rag and it's so important to get some of it I mean obviously you want to get the main debris out now when you're cleaning this section, a few things to look for are um, you want to make sure this seal right here is free from debris or anything that could be hindering that. Another thing you want to look for on this side is this particular air passageway uh, sometimes gets clogged up and this seal. Another thing it's good to clean under here while you have the bot... Uh, <laughs> my watch is yelling at me. Um, to clean under there while you have the lid off because you can get all the way under there. Now, if you need to replace the filters, I'll put links in the description to places like Amazon or whatever, um, but they are not that expensive. But you should replace them fairly often because it does affect your airflow uh, once they start going bad. Now you can get this as clean as you want this to be, basically. I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now, but just with your rag and a, a, a damp cloth, you can get that very, very clean. With this side, at first I was kind of confused about how to take this off because uh, it wasn't that obvious. The first thing you want to do is take off your side brush and you can do that just simply by pulling it up. If it has any kind of debris, and it often will, it's a good time to get that out. Another thing to check is uh, when I cleaned this last, this was, was completely wrapped around with uh, some kind of string. And that's the kind of thing you want to watch out for because, I mean, that can over time cause some more than just... Uh, regular problems. Now to take this lid off, it's kind of confusing. There are two, right behind the wheels here, there are two little uh, spots for your thumb and you really just pull it up. It's very, very simple if you do it that way. Now this brush roll will pull up, you, uh, just pull up directly on it. And when you have this open, obviously you want to clean that. We'll get to that in a minute. But what I am going to suggest to you is Beyond the obvious stuff, which is, you know, clearing the air passages from any clogs or anything like that, you want to do a lot in, uh, of checking of these kinds of areas right here, uh, where the brush roll is sitting and spinning. This thing is spinning very, very fast, and a lot of debris right there uh, can cause some issues. So we're going to use uh, a cotton swab to get that kind of stuff out. Now, this has been cleaned very, very recently, like, like today. So this was a lot dirtier then. But another thing I noticed earlier today was this area was completely like uh, filled with debris. That's the very kind of thing you really want to watch out for when you're uh, doing a deep clean. Now with this thing, uh, the little brush that they give you is really handy. It's got a little thing to cut some of the hair that gets wrapped around there so you can just pull it out with your fingers. You can also use the little comb it to comb this brush out. Again, I didn't think to get it out, uh, but this is pretty clean already. So once you've cleaned this brush roll to your satisfaction, I mean, you can get this very, very sparkling clean. You could use a damp cloth to get this all shiny. You could do as much as you want, but once it's basically clean, to reinstall it, I'm gonna show you this end. Um, you can see this end is just kind of like a, what is that, a hexagon or something like that? That goes in there any particular way. But this, you want it to seat um, flat like this. So you wanna plug it in in the back, uh, flat in there. If it's not flat like that, then the cover won't go on correctly.
cover snaps into place if that brush roll is seated correctly. Now while you have it on this side, a few other things to look for are your drop sensors here. So on, on both sides there are these uh, drop sensors where it's got like a little clear plastic there. You don't want to use any liquid or anything on there. Just mainly get the debris from out of there so the robot vacuum can see if it's about to go off a cliff. The wheels are not going to need too much cleaning. You want to look for any kind of hair buildup around here. Very rarely is anything going to be down in these wells. So not too much to do with the wheels. And a couple, a couple more things. This is something that Nito does not mention but is really important. This little grill back here, and I'm not sure if this is the air intake or I guess it's probably the exhaust. Um, when I first got this Neato, there was a lot of hair buildup right here, like so much so it was completely blocked. And I just happened to notice it, and I was able to use a combination of like just little uh, sharp tools and a vacuum cleaner to get all that out. It hasn't filled up since, so I don't know why that happened. But do a visual inspection of this back grill. If it's filled up with hair, that's going to cause a bit of a problem. So once you do that, the other thing that is helpful to clean and can be the cause of a lot of errors or uh, especially navigation errors is if you have a dirty laser. So the laser, what they say to do is again to use a cotton swab like this. I'm going to try to get it to where you can see what I'm doing. And to never touch the little aperture, the opening that we'll see but to get in there and spin this around five times both ways, we can start to see the little holes that you're not to touch uh, the cotton swab to. Oops, I just did, but I didn't go deep enough. So we went five times that way and five times the other way. And the w reason they say to do that, I think, is to loosen up the dust. But then what you do is you use compressed air and spray it down there. That's all they say to use to clean the lasers is compressed air. You can usually find co compressed air at Walmart or whatever. I'll put links in the description to all this uh, stuff that I'm mentioning that is replaceable uh, as well. And once you clean the laser, basically you are done. Again, I think this is a really handy tool and probably the only one you'll need besides a microfiber cloth. But it's so important to keep these things clean because it not only affects performance, but it can affect the longevity of your vacuum. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like the video or subscribe if it helps you out. And thanks for watching.